From Rochester, New York, this is Mad Dog Movies, episode six. Dun, dun, dun. Welcome to the show. Uh, my name is Mike Boas. And I'm John Vincent. Shall we do some feedback? Okay, let me turn up the speaker. And, right. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, yeah. different type of feedback. Yes, okay. this is the feedback section of the show. Here we go. There's an email from uh, Jason Olszewski. Wow, Mike, great shows. I listen to them while working. You and John have a really good rapport. Plus, your technical production is excellent. I look forward to interviews. Uh, thank you. It's a good thing he wasn't in the studio earlier today. Yeah, well, we have uh, <laughs> we, we tried an interview earlier, and it went very well, and then we had to do it again. But uh, we're, we're learning. Uh, Jason is uh, from Rochester, and he does a blog called jaceland.com. It's spelled funny. Clever. Yeah, well, it's J-A-Y-C-E land.com. Jason's site is good to keep track of everything that's going on in Rochester, upcoming films and art shows, and then he writes about it every week. And I don't know how he keeps it up. It's amazing. He's been doing it for a couple of years. So thank you, Jason. I also have an email here from uh, Stan Main. Do you have any or know anyone who can recommend some good storyboarding software? From the past, I've always storyboarded by hand, mm -hmm. drawing panels out. Uh, every shot, every scene, and I got used to doing that. And recently, I've been looking in. I downloaded the trial version of uh, Toon Boom Storyboard Pro, which right. seems pretty impressive. You need like a Wacom tablet, which is a little drawing tablet, to draw into the the program. That's so what I thought initially. I thought that was the only option, but you say you can scan into it. You can do, uh, and that's what I, I think I'm going to end up doing. I just can't get used to using the stylist and mm -hmm. looking it up at the screen, and then having my hand down below it. So I, yeah, my what I'm going to do is draw on paper, scan into the storyboard program, and then you're able to edit and do an animatic, put camera moves, piece things together, and then make uh, um, just about any option you want. You can make, yeah, it. you can take your uh, storyboards and make them, output them as a movie, or you can output them as a PDF, I guess, if you wanted a, you know, a print version of it, right? Right. And then there's a, there's other softwares. There's actual uh, motion storyboard softwares. It's a kind of pseudo 3D Im mm. Im imaging that you can put uh, uh, prefabbed characters and just drop them into the set. And then you put an, a beginning point and an end point and they'll actually move across the the set. Yeah. And, and, uh, they use that in movies like I remember first hearing about it with Panic Room, sort of moving CG character animatics for every shot. Yeah, there's there's a couple of versions of this uh, different types of that software mm -hmm. out there. Unfortunately, I can't remember the name of it, but it's expensive. The softwares tend to get pretty pricey. Uh, Toon Boom Storyboard Pro, I think the cheapest I found it for right. was between seven and eight hundred dollars uh, right. for that. Uh, download the trial, try it, see if it's for you. Mm -hmm. uh, they also have uh, the non-pro version, which I think you've used before. Yeah, that was, I think it's just a couple hundred bucks, and uh, I don't know if it had, you know, obviously it doesn't have all the same options, so it may be, I don't know if it had a scan capability or not. That was something that I, just poking around with it, I didn't see how to do it. Well, I, you know, storyboarding, I mean, it could be as simple as stick figures, and it, you know, the, the important thing is to plan out your shots visually, and what that'll enable you to do is help the crew and everybody else know exactly what's going on. Sam yeah. Raimi, all he did was, you know, almost indecipherable stick figures. Right. For, for doing the Evil Dead, first Evil Dead film. We tend to do a little bit more detailed storyboards. Um, I'll, you know, for our projects, I'll draw them out, and then Mike over here will, will clean them up, and we're, we just happen to both be artists. So, yeah. I mean, we're able to do do that in, in a more, uh, in a better level. You know, the better your your work is, the more people you can attract to the project. Now, we uh, we storyboarded some stuff uh, in the past without uh, specific software. We were using Premiere to string everything together as an animatic. Right, right. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, exactly. I use Premiere mm -hmm. to as as a uh, as a pseudo uh, Tomb Boom Studio Pro. Yeah, well, we type of thing. you had to scan in. That was really the time intensive part. Probably was scanning everything and uh, numbering everything, and then bringing those images into into Premiere. Yeah, basically, yeah, individual files, and then you bring them into Premiere and drop them on your timeline, and you stretch them out to however how long you want the shot. And we actually recorded audio. Yeah. Uh, voices, sound effects, and we put music down right. along with the moving drawings. But essentially the drawings are black and white drawings. 
but in Premiere I was able to you know zoom in on shots and and rotate shots yeah uh, on the drawings through the through the capabilities of Premiere yeah to imitate a camera movement you right. see so you right. see it and you go oh that's what they're thinking and you know for like the Lord of the Rings movies I think they did animatics for the whole features I mean yeah, they did like a yeah. whole radio play version of it with with you know moving illustrations and that really does add a lot to to it in terms of when you when you actually put the storyboards uh, in an animatic yeah. framework. It's a lot easier for people to understand what you're trying to accomplish because people can look at a storyboard and drawings in, in sequence just like loose paper, but they really don't have a sense of the timing or the pacing of the project. Mm -hmm. George Lucas ran into that problem with the, in the storyboarded versions of Star Wars with all the effect shots. Uh, and he, he was looking at the, the work that, that was initially done by the uh, – Industrial Lights of Magic, and it was it was so bad that he, he couldn't take it. So what, what he did, he ended up making his own animatic mm -hmm. out of dogfights, so World War II dogfights, and he pieced together the entire dogfighting sequence right. between with, the TIE fighters and the X-Wing fighters. <laughs> with old airplane footage. With right. old airplane yeah. footage. Right. But uh, this way, the people who were shooting the effects knew exactly, exactly – what he wanted to accomplish, but you know, how fast does a camera move? How fast is a ship moving through? Made the, made a huge, huge difference. Sure, sure. John, you and I had the opportunity to go to see uh, George A. Romero's Diary of the Dead, which did come to Rochester. We we were surprised. And, and astounded, it didn't get much advertising, I guess. And just, no, there was just, just a little ad in the paper. Just appeared in the paper one day, and we went and uh, checked it out. Um, Weinstein Company, I guess, is distributing that, and they're doing sort of a platform release where it goes around to different cities. And uh, you were all excited about it. We all, we almost went to Toronto. Uh, yeah, to yeah. Well, you know, I've always been a George Romero fan. I thought uh, Night of the Living Dead, of course, is probably the, uh, the originator of the modern-day horror film. Mm -hmm. uh, I did like Dawn of the Dead. Uh, Day of the Dead was... A little weak in areas, but I still enjoyed it. You know, and, I, and I did like Land of the Dead, right. even though maybe it was a little too polished. Um, Day of the Dead is growing on me. Yeah, I did not like it the first time I saw it, or the second really, and then, <laughs> then you sort of gloss. The more you see something, maybe the more you forgive the things you didn't like the first time. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I have the urge to watch it like um, every couple of weeks. I want to see, so I gotta, I gotta pick up a copy of that. I, well, I have it if you want to borrow it. Yeah. But uh, Dawn of the Dead. I think it's still That's a milestone. You know, Dawn of the Dead. I enjoy. I, I tend to watch that more than the others. Right. Even, um, for some reason, you know, the version that uh, George Romero put out because there was, I think, three different versions. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, there were. Yeah, I mean, there was a the, European the, the, version cut uh, by Argento. Uh, right? Yeah, Dario Argento was one of the executive producers on Dawn of the Dead, and so he got the rights to edit his own version of it. That was released in Europe and I think it's a little tighter yeah it's shorter yeah about maybe 20 25 minutes shorter I, w I haven't seen that one yet so I'm gonna really? have to watch that oh yet. I'm I have that one I have the box set that well I they had the document of the dead and maybe that's something that kind of ties right into um what we're doing what's the Roy Frumkeys uh, Frumkeys yeah, yeah. I think his name is, yeah. uh document of the dead is on that box set which was you know I enjoyed it but I did not see it when I was young like or younger mm -hmm. I mean you probably saw that when you were starting out uh, I didn't see the documentary until oh, much later no oh. I wasn't aware of it uh, um, there was no place to see it yeah until the DVD, until DVD started coming out sure as, as far as I was concerned I didn't even know that was there but it was interesting and I know he's done a, uh, he's re revamped it I yeah think. there's a new version and uh, I think it's going to be showing at the uh, the Buffalo Niagara Film Festival um, by the time this podcast is out, we'll probably have already gone. By the time right. I, I'm looking forward to seeing it, and that. we'll talk about that too afterwards. I'm mm -hmm. sure. So, back to uh, Romero's new film, Diary of the Dead. Uh, I went into it. I'd heard some bad reviews, and I did not have high hopes. I thought, hey, you know, I, the concept of having younger people than he's usually working with, uh, you know, film students going out and shooting a new zombie plague as it's happening. That's fine. I can go along with that. Um, but I didn't really. Uh, maybe you should say what you liked about it before I say what I didn't like about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I, I have read a lot about it before going into mm -hmm. it, a number of articles, technical books, as well as right. just reviews. You know, uh, the HD. It was shot in high def and uh, and, D, and mini DV stuff. Um, I I enjoyed the film quite a bit better than than you did, Mike. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to pinpoint exactly why. I guess I went in there and it was basically what I expected it to be. 
Uh, very low budget. The film was made for, I think, $2 million range, I think, which is mm-hmm. for doing a film, even in, they shot it in Toronto, but even in Canada, $2 million to do, uh, you know, a feature uh, that that scope is still not very much money. So visually, I thought visually I thought it was interesting, and I did get I did get that creepy uh, feeling that I did get for the original Night of the Living Dead. It's not anywhere near as good as the original Night of the Living Dead, but it does have some of the similar themes that I particularly liked about that first movie. And he did bring that into. In fact, you'll you if you if you listen to some. Uh, audio references to yeah. the original movie. Yeah, yeah, they mixed in a couple of uh, broadcast, like news broadcast reports, and uh, Romero makes a cameo, and and I don't know if it really felt. You say, well, do I go into it saying, how is this a Romero film? Does it fit into Romero's world? Well, you got to sort of distance yourself. It's, it's from a that. new beginning. It yeah, really you is. Go it's in a whole saying, new. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a whole new visualization of it. Again, you know, and again, he's tapping into the constant uh, barrage of the internet. You know, YouTube and, and, and the downloads Which, and people shooting on video and, and and doing their own projects. So it did feel like a student. It did come across as a slightly polished student film. And yeah. that's kind of what I he was going for and kind of what I expected. So if you're going in looking for a polished Hollywood looking film, this is this isn't it. Yeah. But the whole point was it's from a perspective of these students. And I know Mike had a hard time buying into... Well, some of the logistics of... You know, they they seem more interested in making films and getting them on the internet so millions of people can watch them than actually, like, you know, shooting at the zombie that's coming at you. And, and well, I know. I, I, and the way I look at it is that once you buy the fact that people are coming to life after death, that it, it, makes a lot, it makes it a lot easier to buy into anything else <laughs> than reason. No, not for me. Know? For me, it was like, you got, okay, you got this new problem where your whole world is turned upside down. The media is not going to help you, even if it is the new media of the internet. You've got, you know, well, I mean, it, you got to get your guns, you got to get your water and your duct tape, and you got to hole up somewhere. And, and meanwhile, they're like, I got to make this documentary, and I got to put it on MySpace. And it's like, I, who's checking MySpace anyway if they're like, oh, there's a zombie outside? Right. And I, it was a little preachy. And, and, uh, and, the narration. You know, oh. was, was a bit... And, and, and the one thing that made Night of the Living Dead was it wasn't preachy at all. Right. But the point was coming across under underlying what was going on within the action of the movie. Night of the Living Dead, the original, was very you know nihilistic in a way that was just like it was bleak and it was saying something about the way we interact with each other. And this was, but you could glean that from watching it. This yeah. it was telling me what to think all the time. Like I didn't like being told what to think, and uh, because it's got narration and because of of this uh, woman who's saying. You know, we made this film to do this. We made, and uh, I don't know. By the end of it, I just wanted to smack her. <laughs> I wanted her to get eaten by one of the zombies, but I think he is contemplating doing a sequel yeah. to this film. Uh, what so I did see like, how that goes. you've got that going on. You've got the student film stuff going on. You've got, um, you know, them trying to pull it together and and communicate with the world, the aspects of which I didn't like. But then you've also got the Romero stuff where he's like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we saw a zombie killed in this way? We've never seen that before. And right, you, know, right. you can almost imagine, you know, I guess probably Savini wasn't involved in this, but he used no. to spitball ideas with him. Yeah, George would call him up and say, hey, uh, start, thinking of, start thinking of ways to, to kill people. Right. And so you've got some bow and arrow tricks. You've got someone with electrocution. Uh, you got some stuff in a swimming pool, but there were some good gags, but they almost seemed like to me, it was almost like, Hey, everybody, let's stop the plot for a second and look at this cool gag. Well, but they're all like that. I mean, I look guess. at Dawn of the Dead with a helicopter sequence. Yeah, that is, I that's mean, gratuitous. You yeah. know, I mean, it was, it was freaking, <laughs> oh, here's a helicopter. Oh, there happens to be a zombie coming up from behind the boxes. Oh, <laughs> slash, you know, and the head goes flying off. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, that's. Yeah, uh, you're, you're right. That's... I mean, they're all, I mean, Day of the Dead when uh, I forget, the actor, I forget his name, but he gets his whole body torn apart and he's screaming. They're walking away with his bottom half. I yeah. Mean, you know, all this stuff is, is gratuitous. To it is. I mean, but uh, that's what uh, I think the fans expect. The makeups was good. I liked. Uh, they used CG a couple times, and a little did, bit, but yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, I don't know. Offensive. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't over the top. Yeah. And there wasn't as many zombie effects that you would expect either. In and from like compared to Land of the Dead or, or Night of the Living Dead. I mean, there wasn't as many. I don't think. They're they're driving through Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, you've got Amish, and there was. They ran across uh, an Amish gentleman, uh, and there was some elements of comedy there. Did, oh, did, right, yeah. did you think 
that was out of place or did you I, like no, it? I don't think it was so out of place. I think maybe I thought of an interesting if he had, you know, ventured on with them. Yeah, you I think it, it yeah. could have been, you know, something that became part of the story, I thought, mm-hmm. you know, more than it actually was. Yeah, they, it was a series of vignettes. So everywhere they went, they met someone new and then they sort of left them behind. It would have been kind right. of interesting if maybe one of the militants came with them or, one, or if the Amish guy came with them. Yeah, the militant part was a little, I don't know. It was very Day of the Dead, I guess. Yeah, but um, no, in terms of the dialogue and, and that whole thing was a little forced. Yeah, you know, that, it was that, more you of a, liked it. I liked it that. because I that was something was I could little... grasp onto as more of a movie movie thing. Right. So, yeah, you know, and, and the way I would look at it is I don't see anything wrong with these group of people just trying to survive, get away from the zombies. Yeah. At the same time, trying to shoot it. And, you know, I anything more than that, I don't think you really need for this type of project. But hmm. what do I know? <laughs> the, the problem is after Shaun of the Dead, uh, the one since then, I think the zombie genre might be nearing its end. You know, well, we got a couple ideas that I think are oh, original. So see, see, let's see if they're still original by the yeah. time we get around to making them or start planning them. There was it. a comedy sort of uh, set in a Leave it to Beaver type world called Fido last year uh-huh. where the zombies – it's kind of like you know at the end of Shaun of the Dead, you've got, um, you've got one of them being kept as a pet. Uh-huh. What if everyone had their own zombie pet? Oh, and it's okay. and so I haven't seen it yet. I've heard it's so so not as good as Sean. I mean, it's hard to top Sean of the Dead. Um, and there's a new one uh, out of England called the Zombie Diaries, which mm-hmm. right there sounds like it's a ripoff of Diary of the Dead because it, you get the zombies right. in the diary. But it's probably it was probably produced around the same time and and independently. Um, that the Weinstein Company has bought up the rights to uh, to show theatrically or or whatever domestically. So. Um, I think they bought it basically so it wouldn't compete with their uh, with the distribution of Diary of the Dead. Um, but I've heard it's great. So eventually I think it'll come to the Yeah, zombie DVD this zombie subgenre is always found very fascinating cuz there's, there's always zombie films being made. Mm. You know? I mean Well, from, I think now more than ever before in the last 5 years, I think there's a glut of them, especially directed Well, that happened ones. in the 80s too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, well you know, the, the Italian cyclical. ones. Well, the Italian ones and there was Zombie-related films. There's a movie, Dead Heat, which is hmm. a, a big Hollywood film that was a part comedy about uh, a zo- you know a zombies. Have you seen that one? I, with, I don't even know about it. Now. Dead. I think Dead Heat was with uh, Joe Piscopo. Okay, yeah. And uh, then there was oh, did, okay. Night of the Comets, yeah. right? Yeah, they had yep. that, some the elements to that. And of course, uh, Day of the Dead came out in the '80s. Yeah. Uh, and the Fulci films. Yeah. See, the Fulci films sort of spiraled off of of the success of Dawn of the Dead. And then so there was this huge, you know, Italian ripoff subgenre of everyone doing, you know. The City of the Dead, Zombie, and The the Beyond. Yeah. Which had, uh, you know, you didn't get to the zombies until near the end of the movie. And the Demons movies, which Uh are, you know, Demon, Zombie, they're they're sort of synonymous in the the Italian movies. Right. But now I think, you know, there'll be a a pendulum swing where there's maybe there's going to be too many that are hard to sell. I don't know. Well, we'll see. I mean, you know, a certain level, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but you're looking, you know, the concept of pornography. I mean, how many different ways yeah. are there to shoot yeah. people having sex with each other? Yeah. Yet, just people buy and buy. Every time there's a new one out, they buy it, they buy it, they buy it, they buy it. I think Roger Ebert, or maybe it was Richard Roper, you know, on, the, on that show, whenever they kind of get around to uh, reviewing zombie movies, they always bring up the fact that they don't like zombies. Because zombies don't have personality. They're just, you know, automatons wandering around. And, and you know, they're not interesting like they're a anti-personality. vampire. anti-personality. Yeah, they're not interesting like a vampire, interesting like a, a werewolf. Uh, you, you can't really associate. But, you know, they just have a bias. I think there are good and, and bad zombie movies like any other genre. I think that'll about do it for this episode. If you want to write to us with any other questions, feel free. We are at feedback at maddogmovies.com. And that's our email. If you want to just go to our website for the podcast, that's maddogmovies.com slash podcast. And if you'd like to visit our personal websites, uh, philrosefilms.com is mine. That's P-H-I-L-R-O-S-E films.com. And that'll about do it for another episode. See you next time. Take care, folks.
Music for this episode was provided by Keith Handy. Visit him online at keithhandy.com.